So drinking is one of the more popular activities on a cruise ship. Uh, any cruise you go on, you're gonna find packed bars, drinks flowing on the Lido, and drinks flowing into the night at the nightclubs and late night in the casino. Drinking is a part of cruising. But just because drinking is something that is common on a cruise ship does not mean that drinking comes without danger. And so I'm gonna tell you in this video a few risks that you run when you drink too much on a cruise ship. Hey, 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 what's up everybody? Tony with La Lita Loco. Welcome to the YouTube channel. If you're brand new here and you enjoy cruising, consider subscribing. And if you're one of those folks that don't wanna miss out on any of the new content, make sure you ring the notification bell. Be a part of the notification squad and that way you won't miss out on any of the new stuff. So before we go too deep in today's topic, uh, alcoholism, alcohol dependency is a huge challenge uh, all around the world. In the US alone, about three million cases are reported each year of alcohol dependence. So it is not as uncommon as you would think. And a lot of times uh, people, they don't know that they are alcohol dependent. And so I will leave a link below to Alcoholics Anonymous. They have tools there that can talk to you about your drinking. Uh, you can do that uh, online without talking to anybody. You can find out what situation you're in if you have concerns that way. Uh, so I will leave that information below. A lot of times alcoholism is one of those things that you don't really realize that you need help until you take a hard look at it. So I would encourage you to take a hard look at it if you have concerns and reach out and get the help that you might need. So drinking on a cruise ship, there's a lot of cool reasons to drink on a cruise ship. You don't have to drive. The cruise captain is your designated driver. It's a fairly safe environment and there is alcohol at many spots. So if you're somebody who likes a nightclub, you can drink there. If you're somebody who likes to go to the casino, you can drink there. If you're somebody who likes to socialize around a bar, you can do that. If you just want to get a drink and sit off and watch the ocean, you can do that. So a lot of opportunities for drinking. And in honesty, the big appeal of drinking alcohol is chasing the buzz. Uh, we know that feeling when you go from sober to slightly intoxicated, where you loosen up a little bit, where you're having a lot of fun. It's that buzz that everybody's chasing. The only problem is sometimes when you chase the buzz, you go too far and there's another side of drinking and that is the beyond the buzz phase. To me, that's what I like to call the danger zone. So I'm gonna break down five risks that you run into when you're in the danger zone and maybe give some tips and techniques how to avoid it going forward. Number one, and this is probably obvious to most people, when you're beyond buzzed and now you're full on drunk and you're in the danger zone, uh, a reality is you might get physically sick. You might start throwing up, you might start uh, being dehydrated, and you're going to feel poor, and then you compound that with being on a ship on the ocean, it can equal a really bad time. And then beyond sick, if you get yourself to that drunk level, even if you don't get sick, you might wake up the next day with a hangover, which poses a whole nother set of problems, spending half of your day not feeling well. Like I said, number one, that's the most obvious, and I think that's what most people run into. There are some risks that are less high on the percentage, but could happen, do happen on a cruise ship. If you get too drunk, you might be cut off. And I'm not talking about just cut off from your drink package or the ability to buy alcohol on the cruise ship. You might be cut off from cruising altogether. And what I mean by that is security on the cruise ship, if they notice that you're so inebriated that you cannot control yourself, they might confine you to your cabin. They might turn off your shipboard account where not only can you not charge alcohol, but you cannot, you couldn't go buy a picture. You can't, they could tell you to stay in your cabin. They'll check back with you later and let you know when your cruise can continue. That's, that's pretty extreme, uh, but it does happen. Number three, and this relates primarily to when you are off the cruise ship at port, there's a lot of opportunities to go to spots that have all-inclusive drinking. That means you can power down as much as you want. You can chase that buzz as hard as you want. But again, if you get into that danger zone, you can easily lose your senses, you can lose track of time, and you can risk missing the cruise ship. Uh, a lot of these pier runner situations, and I've seen film of somebody trying to carry somebody that was drunk back onto the cruise ship, risking almost missing the cruise ship because they've drank until they uh, hit the danger zone. Number four is again, something that's probably not happening frequently to the extreme, but probably happening a little bit. The cruise ship is tough to navigate sober. There's a lot of stairs, especially out on the Lido deck. There's multi-levels, 
there's stairs, there's slippery surfaces, there's awkward surfaces. You add a little bit of alcohol to that, especially that danger zone alcohol where you're losing your faculties, there's a good chance that you could slip and fall and get injured on a cruise ship. The most extreme example of that is slipping and falling overboard. Now overboard is one of those situations where most of the time when you are stone cold sober, you will not fall off a cruise ship. Many of the instances of where people have gone overboard are either because they chose themselves to go overboard or they've gone overboard with the help of alcohol. So it's a real risk when you're in the danger zone that if you're out late night wandering the decks and you don't have your sure footing because you're a little too drunk, you might be at risk of slipping and falling and at the worst case scenario, falling overboard. Now number five is not that specific to a cruise ship. This could happen if you're way too drunk at a bar at home, but do you kind of lose your judgment? Uh, maybe you're a $1 tipper, but now that you've had a few drinks, you're a $20 tipper per drink or a $5 tipper per drink, and you wake up the next morning and you're looking at the cash that you had in your pocket and you wonder where it all went. Uh, there might be a happy bartender out there, but you may not have meant to tip $20 a drink, for example. And you might make some bad personal choices too. I know there's many a time late night at the bar where near that last call, you got people that become friends. They end up in a one night relationship that when they wake up the next day, maybe it's not one they would have jumped into if they were just in the buzz area or the stone cold area. They were in the danger zone and now they got a new friend. And the interesting thing on the cruise ship, if it's early on, you're gonna have to see that friend all week long. Okay, I got a bonus one for you too, and this one's just kind of simple. This is about missing out. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I always had that friend in high school that went to every rock concert, and I went to a few of them myself. And so I'd meet this guy in the hallway of high school, and I'd be like, dude, did you go to the Kiss show last night? He's like, yeah, man, I went to the Kiss show. I was like, wasn't it awesome? I mean, it was so cool. They did all the hits, the pyrotechnics, Gene Simmons dripped blood. It was awesome. He's like, I don't know, man. I was so wasted, man. I was so wasted. I don't remember a thing. It's like, oh, okay. And, and it would be every concert. You would go and ask him about it, and his answer would be, I don't know, man. I was so wasted. I was so effed up. I don't know. And so there, there is a real thing that comes when you get into that danger zone that you just don't remember stuff, that you miss out not only in the moment, but you miss out on the memory. And part of the reason to go on a cruise is not only to have a great time, but to also have a memory of that great time and to do the stuff on the cruise. Imagine if you drink too hard one night, you got to sleep in, you got to fight off the hangover, you might be missing out. Uh, Maybe, the, maybe you're going to miss out on your drinking at the end of the cruise. If you spend the first couple days in the danger zone, you won't even feel like chasing the buzz the last few days until you bought a drink package. It's a challenge. So you don't want to miss out when you're on a cruise. So you got to work on not living in the danger zone. So I promised a few tips. Look, I'm not a big drinker. I have drank before in my life. I don't drink a lot on the cruise ship and it's primarily because I don't want to miss out. I'm the same way when I was younger. I didn't drink a lot when I would go to events because I didn't want to miss out. And that's a lot of my motivation. Uh, it's fun to chase the buzz a little bit, but the older I get, it seems harder to chase the buzz. It's harder for me to get there, and it's harder for me to know the line between the buzz zone and the danger zone. A couple good rules of thumb is stay hydrated when you're drinking, uh, whether that's have an alcoholic drink and make sure that you finish a water while you're having that. That's gonna help your overall health. It might slow you down getting to the buzz zone, but it will also slow you down getting to the danger zone. The same thing goes with food. It's not good to drink on an empty stomach. Uh, I know it's a strategy. If I drink with an empty stomach, I can get drunker faster. But again, it also gets you into the danger zone faster. And the big takeaway is to pace yourself. Uh, the worst off I ever was on a cruise ship is when they gave us a free cocktail party on the Carnival Fantasy because the ship broke. I think I drank maybe eight to 10 rum punches in an hour and it floored me. I was stuck for the next few hours on the bed, unable to move. I don't know what I missed out on, but you gotta be careful because there's opportunities sometimes on the cruise ship to binge drink and really you gotta pace yourself. I would say one or two drinks an hour and you'll be able to sustain yourself. If you're somebody who wants to chase that buzz all day long, I'm gonna say it, start early, get a Bloody Mary, get a mimosa, but don't ever really crank it up more than two drinks an hour because then you're really gonna risk blowing by that buzz zone and getting into that danger zone. Everybody's gotta know themselves, right? I can't be really prescriptive on that, but uh, you gotta figure out what's best for you. That way you don't 
you don't miss out. Let me close it out like this. I really hope you hear my heart here. I'm coming at it from a dad perspective. I've had experience in some of these things. Uh, I've lived long enough to spin this cautionary tale. And I just don't want to see anybody get sick, get left behind, get confined to their room. Uh, and I don't want to see anybody miss out on the great things that happen on a cruise ship. Uh, please get your drink on, have a good time, respect others, respect yourself. And if you need help, please seek out and get that help. Uh, the question for the comments is this, what do you do to keep your drinking in control? Uh, do you think about the buzz zone versus the danger zone? What are some tips and tricks that we can share with others? Uh, do you have any stories that might also be cautionary tales that would be teachable that we could help others out with? Please share them in the comments below. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. Here are some other cruising videos that you might enjoy. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media. Again, my name's Tony. This is Ladlita Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.